Ah, alrighty then. Let's see what's uh, see what's in the cards for today's show. Uh oh! Uh, finally, we're gonna talk about Godspeed, you Black Emperor. Ah, uh, it's good to be back in the saddle. Everyone has those couple albums that are universally thought of as mid or even bad by the wider music listening audience, but for some reason, you just like it. For example, I asked my subscribers on the community tab what their favorite underrated albums were that everyone hates but they like. Less of a, ooh, look at my audience type thing, and more of a cathartic, ah, I'm not alone. Like, this one particular comment I really like. Oh, <laughs> wait wait a minute, that's, that's not, that's not a comment, that's the new single I just released, all the things you broke, available on streaming services now, how did you get in here? But anyway, that is this video. My underrated albums. Albums that a majority of people dislike, or are at least indifferent toward that I'm actually a really big fan of. And I'm fully aware how dangerous of a video this is for me to make, you know? Fooling people into thinking I have good taste is kind of the name of the game on this side of YouTube. So before you judge me, just know I also love Death Grips, By the Time I Get to Phoenix by Injury Reserve, and everything, Everything's Raw Data Feel. Ah oh shit, maybe I do have bad taste. Jack White. Boarding House Reach. It's probably a good place to start, because this isn't like some dark secret I've been hiding from the world or anything like that. Because I made a video about this album, about a year ago, about how I came to enjoy it and how it ultimately expanded my music taste to what it is today. One of my most underrated videos, in my personal opinion, I was fucking sitting outside and shit. I was doing uh, Kyle Reed before Kyle Reed did Kyle Reed. Anyway, a large portion of that video was me talking about the controversial sound shift that Jack White did in that album, so this will be a kind of a condensed version, but if you want to see the kind of whole story, I highly recommend checking out that video. The story I told about the record store employee when I placed this on the counter to buy it is like the perfect example, so please, please go watch that after this, of course. After this. Boiling that video down, people knew Jack White as Mr. The White Stripes. Garage rock, blues, and a bit of hard grunge. So when he came out with an experimental art rock, electronic, funk, reggae spoken word album, it was bound to upset some people. Another reason this pick is relatively low on the list, uh, over the years I feel like more and more people are starting to give this album its flowers, but it still definitely divides some people to this very day. Shocker, but I love this album. It essentially helped craft my sonic palette that I kind of use when I listen to music today. And while I saw people describing this direction as whack, I was looking at it as very interesting and extremely forward thinking. The pounding drums and funky keys of Corporation sounds like a jazz song plucked right out of Nuclear Fallout. One of the lone bangers on this album, over and over and over, show that Jack White's still in contact with his hard rock roots, even if there's a little sprinkle of bongo and electronics in the mix. The borderline breakbeat drums on the song Respect Commander that crumble into this melting, slow dance instrumental just sends you on a roller coaster ride of emotions. And the song Get in the Mind Shaft sounds like I'm being slowly hypnotized and indoctrinated into a cult by a funky robot. It's very intoxicating sounding and just so unique. This album sticks out like a sore thumb in Jack White's discography, even after he released his two latest albums. If you've never heard it, I recommend it, and if you have heard it and hated it, for me, go back and listen to it again with a few years of hindsight in your eye. IDK, Is He Real? Now this is the one some people are probably going to go like, what the, what the fuck? Yeah, IDK's 2019 album, Is He Real, is horrifically underrated in my opinion. This album released in my freshman year of college, and this was the first piece of music that me and my roommate really bonded over. Because, you know, he was very much a trap rap fan, you know, like, he loves Juice World, you know, Key Glock, and Young Dolph, of course, rest in peace. But we both listened to this together, and we both found elements that we liked about it. He liked the kind of traditional trap elements to it, but I gravitated toward it because of how outside the box it was compared to all these usual hip-hop releases that he's been showing me, so it instantly stuck out to me. 4200 Choices starts off the album with a very minimal 808 beat, but sprinkled throughout it were these weird atmospheric electronics, and it was really the first thing that I heard that really got my ears perked up, like, okay, let's see where this goes. 
the mouth clicking sounds on the song Porno fit actually pretty well over this crazy 808 bass beat that just is an undeniable banger. It's a bop. And fucking push a T and jitter on this. God, my, ah, it's, uh, he's spitting. And my favorite song on here is Michael What the Fuck. Probably the most experimental song on here while also being the most vulnerable with IDK rapping about his abusive stepfather over these distorted screams like he's trying to put a final nail in the coffin so he could finally get this over with. Like, it's a great song. If this is one takeaway, please listen to Michael What the Fuck. It seemed like a breath of fresh air for me when I was looking at the kind of getting stale trap zeitgeist. And it left me looking at my screen like, damn, finally, something cool. Brockhampton, The Family. They uh, they never made a, a vinyl for this, so uh, this is kind of the, the, the best I got right now. Um, oh, oh, wait, hang on, wait, fall back. Um, uh, all right, cool. So, just bought the CD. Uh, should be here in a few minutes. Uh, the Family. Eagle-eyed viewers will also see I made a video about this album and kind of the whole collapse of Brockhampton in that weird November time period. A big issue people have with this album is they said it didn't really warrant any re-listens and they never really came back to it. Where for me, I constantly come back to this album. You can maybe call it Brockhampton bias because, I mean, to be fair, I did listen to these guys during my formative teenage year. Oh, oh shit. It's here. Huh, huh. Ain't that something? I listened to them in my form of teenage years, so take that for what you will. Also, I think your enjoyment of this really hinges on your ability to look at this as not a Brockhampton project, but a Kevin Abstract solo project. Because this album is literally just Kevin and all his side of the story of Brockhampton's destruction. I don't know, the vibe of an underground sample-based hip-hop album that was made by like two or three people that's released on RCA Records is charming to me. And I think Kevin evolved immensely as a lyricist on this project, and Bareface did a pretty good job producing. Songs like RZA bring this fun boom bap energy to the project, and turn emotional lyrics into this fun summertime bop with a deeper message. I also famously disliked Big Pussy when it first came out, but once I kinda accepted that it was a Kevin Abstract solo project, the earwormy bass finally got to me. Good Time is a great song by itself, with a great lead piano and choir samples. But the wait is really at the end of the track, when Kevin kind of gets into the roots of why he thinks he's so deeply flawed as a person, turning everything into art. Another song that brings a similar vibe is the title track, The Family. A great instrumental with fun guitars and keys, and the lyrics are, again, a real reflection on why Kevin believes that this friendship ended. How he sold his soul to the devil, and just being a flawed human being that blames himself for the band's disbandment. My old video on Brockhampton was a good screenshot for like the week or two when it first came out, but over the months I've definitely solidified my thoughts and kind of firmed my beliefs of me actually enjoying these albums and not just riding off the hype. Are the family and TM fitting endings to Brockhampton? Absolutely not. Are these bad albums? In my opinion, absolutely not. Hobo Johnson. The fall of Hobo Johnson. Please let me explain. Just hear me out. I know that you saw this in the thumbnail and you were like, oh boy, this is going to be rough. Just let me explain. Please. The chokehold that the song Peach Scone had over the alternative community in 2018 was unprecedented. And it was a song that me and my girlfriend bonded over, you know? She liked it because the quirkiness and the beat... And I liked it because the oddity of it. But this isn't about Peach Scone. This is about his second album, The Fall of Hobo Johnson. And yes, I do own this on colored vinyl. It's because my girlfriend does not know what Death Grips is. But you know what? I appreciate it because... Damn it, I really like this album. I'm aware of its quirkiness and it being cringe. But I don't personally see the lyrics as incelly. I see them more as just grossly vulnerable. I feel like some artists who kind of market themselves as being very vulnerable, you know, hard on their sleeve type person, I feel like even to some extent wear a mask to kind of hide from, you know, maybe embarrassing details or like cringy kind of feelings, but 
Hobo Johnson is extremely mask off. He does not care if his real emotions are cringe. And I respect that. And I'd even mention the production on this. This is way better than it has any right to be. It's filled with rock riffs, 808s, and classical strings. Like, for Hobo Johnson? The first song I heard off this album, and the first song that really made my ears percolate, was Typical Story. A fun alt-rock song with heavy riffs and a fun drum line and chorus. Imagine little 18-year-old me, same one who was listening to IDK, you know, bumping this in the crib. I realized three out of the four albums I talked about came out in 2019. That was an underrated year for, mu for music, damn. Moonlight is a perfect example of this, like, weird, quasi-classical, big band, saxophone instrumentation over hip-hop beats. Like, I love this instrumental. <laughs> You and the Cockroach, hear me out. It is a good song. It is a good song. The first time I heard it, I thought it was extremely creative and honestly funny because comedy quote unquote music doesn't hit me all the time, but this was something that I thought was charming. It made me chuckle and you'd think it, you wouldn't really come back to it, but the production is so neat. The lyrics and like storytelling is very fun and creative and I love it the nuclear explosion with the jazz big band ensemble like it seems absurd that i'd like this on paper but ah, i just there's something about it man call it cringe but i still listen to that shit and finally my favorite hobo johnson song from a production standpoint and from a lyrical standpoint Ode to Justin Bieber. The beat here is insane with stabbing string sounds and these fun perk sounds and honestly a really just fun and upbeat drum line that it sounds crazy that it would work but like somehow it just like it manages to fit it together man. Also I really like the lyrical content of Frank Hobo Johnson comparing himself to a young Justin Bieber. He emphasizes with Justin being this like ultra mega celebrity arguably at some point probably the most famous person on earth while simultaneously saying how completely different lifestyles they both live there's this one line that is so funny and so poignant and it encapsulates this song perfectly i, I gotta read it for you when you were on the front page of tmz i would walk home and just go to sleep <laughs> it's a fascinating storytelling topic that i don't really hear a lot about I just really like this song, and if you're iffy on Hobo Johnson, just check out Ode to Justin Bieber, and kind of go into it looking that it's going to be tongue-in-cheek, you know, for, for me, for me, for Big Pop Jake. I found this album very underrated, and kind of showed that Hobo Johnson was pretty underrated, but forget about the last two albums he released, those, those don't exist. The crazy production, and the raw, and sometimes embarrassing emotional vulnerability on this really just connected with me, you know? And that's really why you, that's right, you watching this, are embarrassed about some albums you like because you connected to an artist when most people didn't. It doesn't mean you have bad taste, it just means this particular piece of music sounded a little bit sweeter to your ears than most. So go, leave your comments below. Wow, I can't believe Jake liked this album. Because everyone has that album, they're a little embarrassed to admit that they like even you. So use that comment section as a safe space, feel vulnerable, and finally have a place to talk about your love of The Big Day, Dreamland, and Scaled and Icy. I won't tell anyone. I guess we'll review Godspeed you another time.